Hi. It's okay, kid. It's okay. It's okay. Sit down. Yep. Everything going? Saturday morning. It is only, I get the third Saturday of this debacle, maybe the second. Kind of crazy how things change so quickly. Uh, yeah, I think three weeks ago we were still practicing here in this very space all together. It'll happen again fast. Soon we'll be all practicing together on that. But anyway, we'll get started with class. Let me just turn the fans off so the sound is a little better. Today is the level 2-3 Saturday class. It'll be about 75 minutes. Um, the only prop that you'll need is probably some type of strap, maybe a belt or a towel if you don't have a yoga strap, just anything that gives you a few inches extra reach to grab your foot. So we're gonna be doing some balances. You might not need one, depends on your flexibility, but a strap I think is always a nice thing to have for movements like this. But for now, Let's just start off actually on the back. So coming, <laughs> this is Prescott if you haven't met before. Coming onto the back, soles of the feet together. And just soup to Bhadakonasana. If you need support underneath your thighs or knees, by all means you can put blocks or maybe roll up a towel or a blanket underneath there, a couple pillows. But just let yourself lay back. And if it's comfortable, Bring one hand over the belly and one hand over your ribs. If you can, bring it a little off to the sides of your elbows and relax on the floor. Just close your eyes. Start to feel and notice your breath. So your breath should be moving underneath the hands, moving through the ribs, through the belly, upper belly. Letting the rest of the body be nice and heavy down to the floor. And we'll just begin with a three part yogic breath. So, this breath starts low as we fill up down just into the belly, then up into the middle ribs, then high up into the chest on one three stage inhale, and then just exhale everything out together. So, we'll begin at the bottom of the breath, take a normal inhale. Exhale it out. Breathe in just to the belly, then the middle ribs, then all the way up, and exhale it all out together. Again, begin just low with the belly, then middle ribs, then upper chest, Exhale evenly everything out. Continue like that, filling up starting just really low, then middle, then high. You can imagine you had three elastic bands around your torso. You're trying to expand the bottom one. Hold that expansion as you bring it up to the middle one. And then hold everything as you open the upper band. And then let them all contract down together as you exhale. because it can also connect you to the corresponding spots in the back of the body. So as you inhale, filling up lower backs, expanding lower back, then middle back, then upper back.
couple more rounds. If you aren't already, connecting to that gentle sound of Ujjayi as you breathe in and out. release that control of the breath, coming back to a normal breath in and out. But we're going to stay on the back. If you have a block, you can grab one to put between your hands. Otherwise, extend your legs out in front of you and reach your arms back behind you. Now stretch really long, press the big toe mounds forward, reach the fingertips towards the back wall, palms face each other even if you don't have a block between them. Get really long, see how that makes you want to open just the front of the body and arch your low back as you take a deep breath. Exhale, stay long, press the low back into the floor, engaging the upper abs, your hands and feet may float a little higher, squeeze the low back into the floor, and then relax, deep breath in, get really long, press the toes forward, reach the fingertips back, and then as you exhale, stay long, but hug the mid ribs down into the floor, back, low back into the floor, get really engaged in these upper abs, Again, get long, and as you exhale, press the low back into the floor, engage the front of the body. Squeeze the ribs down like you're trying to prevent a piece of paper from flying out from under you. Squeeze it into the floor, and inhale, relax that. We'll do that one more time. Exhale, get long, press the back into the floor. Maybe lift the head, maybe lift the hands and feet a little higher, press the low back into the ground, get really long, press those toes forward. And then relax. Bring the feet in and brush your heels with your fingertips. Now we're going to do a little glute activation here. So instead of keeping your heels right under the knees like a normal bridge, that press up, you can walk your feet forward so they're a little bit in front of the knees. It'll just help you engage the back of the legs a little bit more. Not too far forward. You still want to be somewhat in bridge, but just not all the way back in because that tends to go up into your quads a little more. So walking the feet forward so you can't touch the heels anymore. You can roll your shoulder blades a little under and then lift into a partial bridge. Make sure that your heels are what's on the ground. So if you automatically pop your heels up in your back bends, push your heels into the ground, lift your toes up and keep your toes up if you need to. Work the upper arms down into the floor. You can always grab the edges of the mat. Take a deep breath in, lower the hips halfway. And then as you exhale, squeeze the heels into the mat, lift your hips up, lengthen the tailbone. Inhale, relax down halfway. Exhale, scoop the hips by pulling your heels backwards, engage the back of the legs, and lower down halfway. Exhale, pull the heels back, scoop up. And inhale down halfway. Again, exhale, pull back to scoop up and lower halfway. Again, pull back, scoop up, get connected to this feeling. So we're gonna do it with one leg at a time. Lower all the way down, keep your feet away from you, but walk them closer together. And then lift your hips up again to that low bridge. Extend your right leg out in front of you, not to the ceiling. Straight out, knees and thighs in line. As you lift up, the foot reaches forward, not up. Inhale, lower halfway. Exhale, lift it up, press the right toes forward, and lower halfway. Exhale, lift up, reach forward, and lower. That left leg should be really working. Lift up, reach forward, and lower halfway. Lift up, reach forward, toes to the front wall, and lower halfway. Or whatever's in front of you, I guess. And lift up, reach it forward. One more time, lower almost all the way. Lift it up, now reach the foot towards the sky, trying to get a little bit higher, reach, 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 and set it all the way down. Setting up for the second side. 
right heel is firmly planted in the floor, toes can be lifted. They don't have to be, but if you have a hard time keeping the heel down, then keep the toes up. Lift up into that half bridge and extend your left leg forward. Hips in line, nice and level, thighs and knees in line. Lower halfway on the inhale. Exhale, lift it up, reach the toes forward. And lower halfway. Exhale, lift it up. And lower, really engage the back of your right leg. Lift it up, reach forward to your left toes. And lower. And lift it up, reach forward. And lower down a couple more times. Lift up, reach forward. And lower. Lift up, reach forward. Pull that right heel back. And lower. One more time. Lift it up, reach the foot towards the ceiling, get a little bit higher. And then bring it all the way down. Windshield wiper it out. Give yourself a breath. Then we're going to meet up in a tabletop facing the floor. So if rocking forwards and backwards works for your spine, you can rock up to tabletop. And always just swing to your side. Once you're in tabletop, adjust yourself onto all fours. And then give yourself some rounds of cat cow. Arching and flexing through the back. Some nice movement up and down the back, not really worrying about a huge stretch either way. When I do this myself, I just feel for whatever part happens to be tightest for me right now, it's low back. So I'm really trying to expand my low back out, tucking the tailbone, pulling very low belly in, and then dipping down. For some people, it's upper back, so you really need to make sure that your shoulder blades are moving. Tabletop, bring your right leg forward, turn the knee out to the side, and bring your right toes to the ground. So you're making a figure four with your right leg over the left thigh. It's just like the figure four we do laying down or seated. If you can, though, lift your right knee an inch off the ground so your shin is more parallel to the floor, not knee down necessarily. And then holding this, tuck your back toes and press back into your figure four. Because sticking the hips backwards rather than forward folding, so I'm really trying to reach out through my tailbone. If, like me, you've been sitting around a lot more than you usually are, this probably feels good. I recommend some type of this figure four stretch several times a day if you're sitting a lot. Laying them back to center. Maybe a couple cat cows, side to side. And then second side, just cross your left foot in front of the right thigh if you can. You can make as much space as you need to get this to happen. Toes are tucked of that left foot, or both feet actually. Left knee a couple inches up off the ground. And then press it back. One side might be tighter than the other. For me, this is the tighter side. Deep breath again, trying to extend out the spine. And then bring it back in, tabletop. Again, just a few cat cows or a little side to side or spirals. And check in with your fingers, nice and wide. Base firmly across those first knuckles of the fingers, tops of the palms. And then press it back to your downward facing dog. Yourself a few moments to find some movement through your downward dog, waking up the legs and the arms, the shoulders, serratus on the sides of the ribs. Walk 
your ring forward to the front of the mat. Once you get to the front, just fold down, soften the knees, relax out of your low back. This way a little. Let your head be heavy, let the whole upper body be heavy down onto your legs. Then release your arms, round your way up to standing. Reach the arms overhead, and hands to heart. Surya so Namaskar, inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Nice long flat back and step or float back to Chaturanga. From here, upward facing, open up. And exhale over the toes, downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, lift your right leg. Step forward, coming into your warrior one. Arms rise. Settle into your legs. If your back heel is up in high lunge, that's perfect. Turn the chest to face forward. Keep your legs nice and strong. Then look in front of you, bring your palms and your elbows together. Lower them so you can look forward for balance. Draw the back knee up. Touch your elbows with the knee in front of you. Extend the arms into the air. Extend the left leg forward. Bring it back together. Touch. Extend the leg back, warrior one. And then hands down, step back and lower chaturanga. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Second side, left leg forward. Right heel down or up. Arms rise to your warrior one. Settle into those strong legs. Turn the chest forward, hug the belly in. Then forearms together in front of you. Lean forward, lift that back knee up. Pull it up, touch the elbows. Extend the arms to the sky, find your balance. Elbows to knee again. Carefully step back right into your warrior one. Deep breath in. And exhale, vinyasa. Hands down. Lower halfway. Inhale to open. And exhale back, downward dog. Give it a breath in your downward dog. And then soften your knees. And hop or step to the front through your flat back into your fold. Inhale to stand, and hands to heart. Again, reach up, and fold down. Lap back, and step or float back, low push up. From chaturanga to upward dog, and back to downward facing dog. From here, step your right foot forward, and open right out into warrior two, facing your left. Pause in your warrior, spread out the toes, settle down into your legs, try not to lean forward with the chest. As you straighten your front leg, pivot your toes to the left, bend into your left knee, coming into a side lunge or drop stance. Look forward for balance, turn your front palm to the sky. As you shift forward, pivot the toes around again, pull the back leg up into the air for your flying warrior. Reach out through the right palm, spiral your hands away from each other. Lightly, carefully land back down. And then through warrior two to chaturanga. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Left leg, warrior two. Open up to the right. Again, settle into your warrior. Nice and strong in those legs. And then straighten, pivot your toes to the right. Bend into your right knee. Keeping nice and strong in your right leg, don't just fall into the hip. Look forward, pivot to the left again as you reach out through your left arm, pull the back leg into the air, catch your balance. Lightly land, pivot to the right. Back through warrior two, into your vinyasa. Chaturanga to upward dog. And back to downward dog. Again, a couple breaths in your downward dog. And then hop or step to the front, flat back, and fold. Inhale to stand, and hands to heart. Once more through, inhale, reach up, 
Exhale, fold forward. Lengthen and step or float your way back. All the way through vinyasa to your downward dog. This time, step your right foot forward, right into high lunge. So everyone keep the back heel up, the back knee up, soften the knee, tuck tailbone a little bit, take a deep breath. Exhale, dip the back knee down, round over the front thigh. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, dip the knee almost to the mat, round over the leg, shift back. Inhale, lift up. One more time, exhale, dip it in. This time as you lift up, bring your hands to your heart, lean forward, warrior three, Udigasana. Find your balance over that standing leg. You can bend the knee a little bit, soften it so you can really get your hips to face the ground. Lay any touch down, high lunge, and vinyasa. Left leg forward, high lunge. Get your balance, turn the hips to face forward, soften the back knee, and then dip that knee down, round over the thigh. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, dip it in. Inhale, lift. Once more, dip in. Inhale, lift up, bring your hands to your heart, lean forward, and pick the back leg up into your warrior three. Facing the hips to the ground, belly nice and firm. Back to high lunge, and vinyasa. Couple breaths in your downward dog. And then from here, hop or step forward, flat back and fold. Inhale to stand and hands to heart. Now, a few standing balances from the front of your mat. Bring your feet a little closer together. Find a focal point for your balance, your drishti, something unmoving, preferably in front of you. Now, for this class, if you haven't noticed, you will need a little bit of space in front of you. So if you're close to a wall or furniture, you might want to pull your mat back a little bit because we're going to be coming up into things like half moon and reaching out. And I don't want you to hit the wall. If you have trouble with balance, a wall might help you. So take that with a grain of salt. Shift your weight to the right foot, and we'll start in tree, bringing your left foot up. Nice and firm, zip up that inner line, so don't just sag off to the side with the hips. Push the leg in. Relax the standing ankle a little bit. Maybe spread the arms, not necessary. Maybe float that hand down, reach your right arm up and over a little bit more into your side bending tree. Not a huge side bend, just a little bit. And come up to center, and we'll just do that on the second side. Simple start. Shift your weight out to your left, right foot comes up, finding tree pose. And hug that side in a little bit. spread. Maybe you float that right arm down, the left arm up, coming into your side bending tree. And then lift it up. And come back to center. Shake it out if you need to. Now, hang on a moment, I'm going to adjust the camera. I just noticed that the camera's a little low. And since we're going to be doing some lifting poses, I'd like you to be able to see a little bit higher. That's a little bit better. Hey. <laughs> so from here, bring the feet a little closer together. Draw in like you're squeezing that little bit of mat in between your feet and float your heels up. 
Imagine that you're squeezing a piece of paper between the legs and trying to lift that up. So don't bow the legs out to the side. Zip up that inner line. Hug the belly in, lengthen your tailbone. Reach your arms out in front of you, palms down. Start to bend your knees. Come down, pause, tuck tail, belly in. Come down a few more inches. Pause, tuck tail, belly in. Either stay if your knees need you to stay, or you can sit all the way down on your heels. Let the knees and the heels shift forward. Hands come to the knees, shoulders back. Nice and upright. All the way back up. And then heels down, separate the feet. Toes out, heels in. And come down into a nice wide squat. You may be a little bit higher, that's okay. But try to make sure that you can control the shift of the weight around your center. If you just drop down and you're stuck and you have no control, then you might want to prop yourself up a little bit higher. But if you can, dropping down, we'll just start with the flexed version. So chin to chest, walk your hands out, round your spine. Keep the hips heavy as well as the crown of the head. Maybe walk one arm out a little bit more. Maybe the other arm, just getting really long through your back line. And work your breath as deep down into the back of the rib cage as you can get it. Then walk your hands back in. Bring your right hand across the front of the shin if it fits. Reach your left arm up and open into a nice, easy twist here. Reaching back through the arm, palms spread nice and wide. Work this bottom arm a little bit into the leg. And then switch sides, other arm across the other shin. And twist it open. Bring your best to maintain the breath in this twist. Loosen it up a little bit, and slowly stand back up, arms overhead, and feet together at the front of your mat. Full sun, sit down into your chair pose, take a deep breath, and exhale, fold forward. Flat back, and step or float back through your big nuts, from chaturanga to upward dog, and back to downward dog. From here, lift your right leg. Stay back in the downward dog first. Just roll the leg in, then follow that forward, tuck the leg up into the body. Inhale, extend it back. Tuck the leg in, lift your left heel, rounding the lower back. Pull it forward, knee to nose. Extend it back, nice and long. Lift up, tuck the leg in, round your way all the way forward. Step on the foot and lift up, high lunge. Face forward, hands to the heart, and twist to your right, left elbow over the right thigh. Just a couple breaths here, working the chest up towards the line of the thumbs. And as you lift your high lunge, open up to your warrior two, come right into reverse. And then spin the hands to the ground, sit your back knee down. Lean into your left hand, walk your right foot out, twisting to your right. Either tuck the back toes and lift the knee, or reach back with your right hand for the quad stretch. Lift out of your left chest, turn to the right. And a couple breaths. Pivot your legs to the left, bend your left knee. Come up into your drop stance. Turn your right palm to the sky as you float up onto your right leg. Square off and come into your warrior three, or if you toss it. Catch your balance, that was me. That was the wall kid. He has a hard time knowing where sounds come from. Turn your left thigh to the ground. 
and come back through your drop stance, pivot to the left, either repeat when you lean on your left, press up, or if you can get low enough, bind around your left leg. Like that. Little adduction still between the legs. It may look like I'm collapsing into my left leg, but I'm keeping the strength here between them. And now release forward again, flying warrior this time. Reach out through your right palm, lift up. And spin the hands to the ground, hop, step or float back, chaturanga to upward dog, and back to downward dog. From downward dog, lift your left leg, and knee to nose, round it in, but tuck up. Inhale, extend it back. Fold the leg in, round forward through your spine. Inhale, reach it out. Fold the leg in, lift up, pull yourself forward, step on the foot, come up into your high lunge. Bring the hands together at the heart and twist to your left, right elbow over the left thigh. Bend the back knee a little. You don't want to lock the leg out, but the knee doesn't have to be visibly bent. Walk your left foot in again. Pivot your toes to the right, lean into your drop stance. Open the arms. As you shift forward, lift up, but come into the squared off warrior three of the Find your balance. Then back into that drop stance, pivot to the right. If you can come down low enough, maybe you can grab the bind. Float up onto your left leg, flying warrior, reach out through that left arm. And then hands to the ground. Little hop, step or float back. Chaturanga to upward facing dog. And back to downward facing dog. Give yourself a breath or two. step to the front. Lengthen and fold. Bend your knees, sit back into chair, and stand up hands to heart. Again, sit down into chair pose. Take a deep breath and exhale, fold forward. Come to your flat back and step or float back through whatever vinyasa you'd like. Feel free to skip chaturangas. From here, lift your right leg up, knee to nose, tuck in, come forward, tap the mat with the knee, lift it back up, then send it back, lift up, fold the leg in, come forward, tap the mat between your thumbs, lift it back up into your chest, then send it back. One more time, tuck it in, lift up as you come forward, then tap, this time just lift up, place the foot, and open to your warrior two. Reverse your warrior, straighten that front leg, and come into your triangle pose. Pull the bottom foot back as you bring your right hand down and open up to your left. Maybe add your support underneath that bottom hand if you'd like a block. Look 
down. Bend the knee. As you plant your hands, step back through high plank to side plank with the right arm up, balancing on your left arm. And we'll pulse the hips just up for five, four, three, two, one. Back into your warrior two, step your right foot forward, lift up, open to your left. Reverse. And then come up and come forward for your first half moon. So look to the upper left corner. Do your best not to kick off the back leg. Try pulling it up into the air. And either right hand to the ground to a block or floating in the air. Just catch your balance. Think of pulling everything into the center of that top hip rather than sagging. Lightly land back into your warrior two. Reverse again. And then come up and just at ease. We're gonna come into that half moon arms akimbo. A lot of you have taken my class many times have been with me through this before. We're gonna try to attempt to come into half moon, keeping your hips open the whole time. So maybe back toes turn out and a little bit closer in. Try not to close as you shift forward to warrior three and then open to half moon. Try staying open the whole time. So pull your back leg forward into the air and catch your balance. You can keep your hands at the hips if you find that helpful. You can always release your right hand to the floor or a block. Light and carefully land. Reverse. And then again, come up. Now this last one, bring your hands behind the low back. Now for me, my wrists and elbows, because of tendon problems I have, I don't like reverse prayer. You can take reverse prayer if that works for you. For me, it doesn't. So I just bring my fists together. It's basically just a way of not using my hands. And then facing forward, we're gonna do the same thing. If you need to release your right hand to the floor, by all means, please do. Don't fall just because you're holding your hands behind your back but try to keep the hips open and lift that leg, come into your balance. And gently land, reverse, and vinyasa. Hips down, step back, lower, breathe your way through. And pull it back down the dog. Lift your left leg, round the leg in, tuck it in, tap the mat between your thumbs, lift it straight back up, send it back. Come up, tuck in, open forward, tap down, lift back up, then send it back. One more time, tuck it in, round forward, tap the mat, lift a little higher, place the foot, and open to warrior two. Reverse your warrior, straighten that front leg out, and tilt your way into your triangle pose. Engaging the toes, engaging your legs a little towards each other, lengthen that bottom side, and open across the hips. around the foot as you step back right into side plank on your right arm, left arm to the sky. And then you can always bring the right knee down if you need to, otherwise pulse up, five, four, three, two, one. Bring the left hand down, step your left foot forward, open up into your warrior two again, reverse it, sunshine, oh my god, yay. Come back up to your warrior two. First half moon, just regular. Come up any way that you need to. Catch your balance, get it into your body. Again, that strength, top of the right hip. And then 
that seven down, reverse, come up. Yeah, you like the sunshine. He was sitting right in the sunspot. Now arms akimbo. Set your hips open. Again, if you need your hand down, release your hand to the floor. Otherwise, keep the hips open. Maybe step the back foot closer. Think of pulling your back arch to the front heel. That might help you lift and engage up. So it's not a kick, it's a pull. Like you're gonna drag the mat with you all the way up the side of the leg, coming into your balance. Stay open, lightly touch down. Reverse. And then we have one more, coming back up. Again, hands behind you. Reverse prayer if you can do it, or fists together. Open across your chest. Look forward, last one. Pull <laughs> the back leg into the air without the support of the arms if you can. Keep your hips open with the work of the legs. Carefully land, reverse it, and then vinyasa. Hands down, step back, draw forward as you lower. Inhale to your back bend, and exhale back to your downward dog. One more time, a couple breaths in your downward dog, or a drink of water if you've been talking this whole time. Never had importance of breath and yoga is so illustrated to me as I've been doing these online classes. <laughs> it's a lot harder when you don't breathe. All right, so from downward dog, hop or step forward, move your flat back into your fold, bend your knees coming up through your chair, and then push through your heels, stand up hands to heart. Now standing at the front of the mat, this is when you might need your strap or a towel or belt or whatever. If you can't quite reach your foot standing with the leg extended, you can kind of bend and grab the hold of the big toe, but I prefer you be more extended and shoulder back when you lift. So shift your weight onto the right foot, lift your left knee up, grab a hold of the big toe, Uttida Hasta and Angustasana. Find your balance. Try to plug the shoulder back. Again, you can bend the knee or use a strap around the sole of the foot. Let the leg float open to the side. Center, switch hands into the twist. It can be a bent knee, it can be the outer edge of the foot. And just set it down and shake it out. Shift it right up to the left foot and grab hold of your right big toe. Start to extend the foot forward. Let it float out to the side. Switch hands. Again, maybe bent knee. And then release and shake it out. 
simply from scanning. If you like blocks for things like pyramid and four folds, you can put them on either side of the front edge of your mat. Standing at the front, hands to the hips, step your left foot back about two and a half, three feet. Square off for your pyramid, fold down, hands to the floor or to your blocks. As you draw that right hip back into place, extend out through the upper body, and maybe fold down. To twisting triangle, bring your left hand closer to the foot or higher on your block. Right arm starts to reach up to the sky. Bring the hand down. If you need a block for balance, bring the left block out in front of you. As you start to float up, come first into Degasana, and then revolve to half moon. Start to bring your left hand down, right arm starts to reach up. You can bend your knees if that helps you get more into the stable twist. And then you can think about extending through the limbs again. back down into that starting position of pyramid, standing anyway. Bring your hands to your heart, look forward. Again, warrior three, come up. You can keep your hands out to the side. You can bring your hands behind your back for that same bind we had in half moon. And then start to bow towards the standing leg, reaching the left leg up. Not quite standing split, but it's halfway down there. Degasana B or C, I think. And then simply step the feet together and shake it out. And reset your blocks. Step your right foot back about two and a half, or three and a half feet backwards. Square your kicks off. Bring that left hip back in place, lengthen out, and fold down over your legs. Up with a twist, right hand in or higher, left hand up to the hip, start to rotate, maybe that left arm reaches up to the sky. You can bend the back knee if you need to. starting point for pyramid, <laughs> hands to the heart again, lean forward into the gasana. Once you catch your balance, maybe hands to the side, maybe hands behind your back, and you bow kind of halfway down towards the leg.
and back up, standing, shake it out. Really so excited to see glimpses of the sun. set up for a little bit of floating action. It might be just rocking back and forth. If you saw one of my videos, I broke down floating into single leg, double leg, and strap. This is the single leg version. So standing split, getting a little bit of a hop on the foot back from standing split to three-legged dog, trying to be quiet and light to start. If the idea of going up in the air doesn't really compute, just think about being really quiet as you hop the foot back and forth. Otherwise, you can start to hop a little more vertically, or again, no hop has to happen. Maybe you just lean back and forth. So right foot forward, hands to the ground, coming into your standing split. If you need to bend your knees to get your hands down, you want your hands firmly on the floor and a good distance in front of your foot. Lean forward, lift your right heel, push the ground away with the arms, draw your belly in, then soften back onto the heel. Again, rock forward. Maybe hop that right foot back to your three-legged dog a little bit, and then maybe hop it forward. Again, you can just stay leaning back and forth, lifting the heel and coming back onto it. Maybe you can start to get a little bit more of a hop, drawing the leg in as you move quietly forwards and backwards. Eventually, it's a little bit of a vertical hop, trying to hug the leg in. It's kind of like an up-in-the-air version of knee-to-nose, to be honest. Give that a try a few times back and forth. Really engage in. It's a lot like that tucking in of knee to nose, folding the leg in, bring yourself forward, you're pulling up through this section. And then once you've done it a few times, try it with the second side. Don't try to think about getting the second leg up in the air. That's usually the first mistake. People just kick and they fling themselves around. There's nothing graceful and controlled about it, and there's not much progress to be made from that. So really try to be slow and controlled with it. So coming down over your left leg. Again, maybe just rock back and forth. Don't worry about the left leg going into the air. It'd be more impressive if you could just float it an inch or two off the floor. As you shift back and forth. But maybe you start to get a little of a hop back and forth. Three-legged dog, back to your standing split, being nice and light and quiet. Or maybe a vertical float. When you're done, roll it out. A lot for the wrists. Got a little bit more fun stuff to go. Starting with figure four. So standing at the front of the mat, shake it out, give yourself some space around you. A couple feet, I know a lot of us don't have space. At least at home, that's why I'm here in the studio. Crossing left ankle over right thigh. Come down into your figure four. Now a lot of you know Galavasana. That is an arm balance that we, we're gonna take, and there's a couple others that you might wanna do. So maybe getting the hands to the ground is just where you are right now. Maybe you're staying up really high. The arm balance obviously isn't gonna happen if your hands can't come down, but as long as you can get the elbows over the leg, you can kind of walk your hands out and bend your knees. And if you can hook the foot around the shoulder, the knee to the other shoulder, then it's just a leaning forward and lifting the bottom leg. It doesn't have to extend, it might. You can extend that bottom leg out, but it doesn't have to. Give it a couple tries. Again, like standing split, maybe you're just leaning back and forth from hands to foot. When you've given it a couple tries, it really helps to push that whole bent leg against your upper arms. And the higher your arms it gets, like foot to armpit, knee to armpit, the easier the balance is gonna be. Then we'll do it on the second side. Once I catch my breath, 
press the right ankle over, come down, hook the foot and the knee, and maybe lift, maybe extend, maybe just stay bent in, maybe just rock back and forth. Give it a few tries, hollow in, stay tucked. Again, the foot doesn't have to leave the ground. You can just be lighter on the toes, bringing more weight to the hands, and then rock back to the heel. Just a little bit forwards and backwards until you feel your control around your center of gravity. All right, once you've given that a try, Galavasana on both sides. If you'd like, when you're watching this recording, you can press pause and try Galavasana with the lifted leg, going from one shoulder, swinging around to the other shoulder going through Galavasana A, B, and C. It's kind of like Galavasana versus scissors. If that makes no sense to you, I'm not gonna do it right now. So that's just if you wanna play on your own. Otherwise, shifting onto your right foot again, figure four, starting with this first side, bend back into your legs. If you can, left hand to the sole of the foot, the other hand to your low back, starting to work into a twist. If you can slide more of the arm, maybe the elbow passes that foot, Bend the standing leg. If you can get the elbow past, maybe the fingertips touch the ground, maybe you just take this twist. Maybe if your foot can really come to the upper arm for dragonfly, sitting onto the side, bring your hands down and extend that leg out. Again, your elbow has to be past the foot first before that balance can happen. Otherwise, I mean, you, you need to be standing on your upper arm for the leverage to get the hips up and over. And that is one key to it. Think about coming up and over your leverage point, not just sliding from the ground up. Let's see, this is my tighter hip. Other side, trying to get the elbow past the foot as much as possible. Hands to the ground. And lean. The other foot's not as important. But if you tighten the hips, you might need a towel or something. You saw I start to slide off my own arm. Especially if you're sweaty, the sliding will be a lot. So you put a little towel there and give it a try. Again, maybe try both sides again. And then we'll come back to standing. You can try those again because I'm gonna do one more additional piece. This one is a little bit harder for the hip, so if you are already at your limit with figure four, just practice Galavasana or Dragonfly, Parsvottandasana, or variation of. The last one requires Half Lotus. So if Half Lotus doesn't work for you, stick with figure four and work on one of those two balances. Otherwise, starting on the same, or the first leg again, Standing on the right, bring your left foot up to the inner thigh, coming into your half lotus. From here, you're going to twist past the half lotus knee, getting that knee onto your arm for half lotus scissors. Again, the leverage point is the knee coming as high up onto the arm as you can get it. If Lotus isn't gonna work and you can't get that twist of the knee up over your upper arm, again, try figure four, Galavasana again. You can do both sides. But once you get the Lotus lift, bring the hips up and over rather than letting yourself sag backwards. You really need to get your weight forward, just like Crow, just like Chaturanga, just like all those other postures. Weight forward, leveraging over your elbows right over the wrist. That's your balance point. Once you've done both sides, give it a try, shake it out. Time to make our way to the floor. From the front of the mat, inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold down. Flat back. And step or float back. A little push up to upward dog and back to downward facing dog. From downward dog, you can jump through seated or just sit back, whatever works. Extend your right leg out, bring your left foot in, starting at Janusha Shasana. 
turn towards that straight leg, and then either hands behind you to sit up tall, whatever you need to do to forward fold over that front leg. Breathe deeply down your back. sit up tall, leaning forward, but if you can get the hug, your hands can be out to the side, just working the chest towards your front foot, or you can bind around that bent knee and bow forward. Your left hip may pop up, it's okay. Loose it up, grab a hold of that left foot, shake it out a little bit, grab underneath the leg, and then hook your knee as much up over the shoulder as you can get it. Plant your left hand out to the side, squeeze the leg into the arm, you'll need that strength, both hands down, cross right ankle over left, flex this mug is going to be a problem in a second. Cross that right ankle over left. As you lift your hips, lean forward and squeeze your legs off to the left. Asha the cross. Trying to find your balance. My hands are a little wide apart. See if you can get them more shoulder width. Kind of hanging on this top leg. And then bring it back. Extend your left leg, bend your right leg in. Jhanu on the second side. Turn towards that leg and fold. Give it some breath, soften the back of the body. Sitting up, bring that right knee up to the sky, fist width distance between the foot and the thigh. The left hand can help you, reach your right arm up, bring it forward, get it in front of that shin, either tent your fingertips, work the chest forward, or bind around that lifted knee and bow down. It's a very kind of compressed, crampy feeling trying to work that right side further in front of the shin to lengthen out the right side of your low back. Lift it up. Grab a hold of that right foot. Shake it out. Hold of underneath the leg and hug that knee as much up over the arm and shoulder as you can. Bring your right hand out to the side, left hand onto the ground, squeeze the leg into your shoulder, cross left ankle over right, hook the feet, and then lean forward, send your legs off to the right. Try to level off the shoulders, hug the belly in, come forward over your balance point, and then come back to seated. Shake it out. So we're gonna do a little bit of a gravity surf, floating side to side maybe, or you can try one side and then the other again, just lifting up. So for the float, make sure everything is out of my way. Uh, 
up and a knee up. First leg maybe, or you might want to start with your easiest side. Cross at the bottom ankle over top, hook the feet, come into your Ashtabha Krasana. Once you find the balance, get strong as you pull the bottom leg in and around, coming to crow, and then to the other side. It's coming back and forth, using the support of that knee on the arm. The bottom leg just kind of sneaks under. That's the hard part is you need the hip opening to thread the leg underneath. Good luck, give it a try. I wish I could see what you're doing to help you. But hopefully you can rewind and look at it again. We'll see. So give that a couple tries, maybe floating side to side. You really need to lean forward. A lot of people get scared if they lean too far back. It's not gonna work. Lift the hips, pivot forward over your elbows, over your wrists, and use your fingertips as a break, not the heels of the hands. Once you're done with that, just sitting down. Grab some kind of support. It can be a block, it can be a pillow, it can be a bolster. If it's a pillow, make sure it's a fairly firm one. I'm gonna take supported deep burrito karan. You are at home though, so if you'd rather, you can always stick your legs directly at the wall with your hips between the floor and the wall. Just make sure that it's fairly flat and that you're not on a weird carpet or strange surface where your hips are uneven. But if you have a block or something similar to a block, coming down onto your back, lift up as if for bridge, lowest or second height of the prop underneath the hips, get the arch to the chest though, and then lift the legs straight up into the sky. But I'm always super picky about this. What I tend to see is this. The feet come forward and the edge of the block digs into the low back and you're just collapsed. I don't really know what the point of this is. You really need to get the legs forward, arch the chest, open your low ribs a little bit, and really sit the back of the hips down onto the block. So the upper body is in an arch like bridge. The weight of my legs is just coming right down into the block, ideally. class with, belly, ribs, chest, smooth exhale. It is effort to keep the legs up, keep zipping up that inner line, resist the urge to pit, uh, fidget the feet around.
returns that to our yoga breath that we started with. Inhaling first the belly, then up into the ribs, then into the upper chest, and then exhaling on the air out all together. stay. Otherwise, carefully come up off the blocks using your arms. Move them out of the way if you'd like to come down to full Shavasana. Or just stay in the blocks if that feels restful. Just allow yourself to fully rest into the floor, to the props. Relax the face and the jaw. You can see it all out of the window, maybe a little smile out of the blue sky. I can see it through our skylights. Start to move your fingers and toes around a little. If you're still on the blocks, carefully come off the blocks so your back can be flat on the floor for a moment. Once you're down, moving your fingers and toes, maybe stretch the arms back overhead, lengthen the whole body out. side or the other, use your arms and gently press up to an easy seat. The shoulders rest back, lengthen the back of your neck. We'll close with one more deep breath. Take a huge inhale. Hold the breath in. Take another sip. Hold it. And exhale. Namaste. Thank you all so much for sharing practice. Again, these classes, whether they're live or not, we are recording them and posting them on Vimeo.com and also linked from our website, southbostonyoga.net, probably from our social media on Facebook and Instagram as well. But David and I are going to keep putting out this content. Um, now, teacher trainees, we're meeting on Zoom at 1 o'clock. You should have gotten the link. If you didn't, please text David or me, and I will send you that personal link because we are meeting at 1 o'clock for at most 40 minutes because we have the free version of Zoom, and that's really all we need. We just want to check in all together with you so we can go over the assignments, see if you have questions that are just easier face-to-face. -face. You are, of course, always um, able to text or email me or David or call us if you need to talk one-on-one. -on -one but the group dynamic is something that we're really missing right now, so even just a quick check-in on Zoom is super helpful and we'll check in with each other. Hopefully we'll be practicing and teaching together again soon. That goes for everyone. I can't wait until the space is filled. 
with your healthy, happy faces. And I miss you all. I love you. Take care of yourselves and each other. And yeah, we'll see each other soon.